What is up folks? Today's video is all about how you can understand the color science of your lights and why color accuracy is so damn important. And we are going to go way beyond just CRI and TLCI and I'm going to explain to you all why those color tests are pretty much irrelevant nowadays. So this video is specifically for all of my friends that do not know what you're looking at when you're looking at this right here. This is what is called a color vector graph. And I'm going to explain how you can properly read a TM30 calculation, which is what this is, as well as an SSI comparison. Now, me personally, I have become obsessed with this stuff because I do have a huge deficiency in my eyeballs that I've talked about in the past. So I am constantly on the journey of trying to achieve a somewhat natural color rendering. However, obviously when you have a wicked red-green colorblind like myself, I would have no idea what natural color rendering even means without this handy little tool right here. This is the Siconic Spectromaster C800U. Now I think most guys would call this a spectrometer, however Siconic did write on it Spectromaster. Is it Spectromaster? Spectromaster? It's a Spectromaster. All jokes aside, I bought this last summer to help me out on set, and honestly guys, it is one of the best investments that I have ever made. But this is not an ad for Siconic, because our guinea pig for today is this little bad boy right here, the Nanlite FS300. Now on the surface, this FS300 is a pretty decent light. It is half the price of a Forza 300, but has equivalent output. And I picked this up last year as a cheaper option for something to pair with my Forza 500. However, there are many downsides to budget-friendly lights, and when it comes to LEDs, color fidelity is usually one of the things that gets neglected. So let's dive in right now and look at the readings I got testing the FS300 with my Siconic color meter. All right, folks, the first thing we are going to pull up is what most manufacturers advertise, and that is the CRI. Okay, so now as most of you all already know, RA is the overall CRI calculation. And on the surface, this one is quite excellent. It's a 98.8. Now there's something really important to take note of, and that is that CRI calculations do not include color samples R9 through R15. And most people do not even know this. And this is really important because those specific color samples, R9 through R15, those are actually the colors that are most representative of real world objects. But even more importantly, color samples R9, R13, and R15 are used to evaluate skin tones. And they are not even included in the overall RA CRI calculation. So this is why a lot of industry folks have straight up abandoned CRI altogether. Because CRI is only basing its overall calculation off of the first eight color samples, R1 through R8. So, you know, at first glance, if you didn't know what you were looking at, you know, the FS300, you would say, oh, it's got a CRI of 98.8, that's an excellent fixture. However, it's not including this R12 channel of 86.5, which would definitely pull that overall 98.8 down. However, I do wanna point out that the skin tone colors, R9, R13, and R15, are actually all quite excellent on this specific fixture. However, take note of that CCT reading of 5,370 Kelvin. Cut to the color vector graph. Now we have a TM30 reading and this is even more revealing. TM30 is far superior than CRI because it's a newer technology that relies upon more modern color science. But more importantly, TM30 is actually calculating 99 colors versus CRI's eight. Now notice down here at the bottom of where it says RF equals 96. RF is a measure of the average color fidelity, which indicates how natural the color rendering of your source is. Now generally anything with an RF of 95 or above is considered to have an excellent color fidelity and anything with an RF of 90 to 95 is still considered high fidelity. However, what I really wanna drive home here is that when it comes to TM30 specifically, the number value isn't the end all be all like CRI. 
So let's just take a closer look at our graph. So each of these numbers around uh, the circle, these represent a different hue and they are called hue bins. And there are 16 different hue bins around our circle. So you'll notice this squiggly line with arrows, but if you look under it, there's a solid black circle. That solid black circle is our key indicating perfect color fidelity and saturation. And the little squiggly line with the arrows above the black circle is actually our light. So what's going on here is anytime our little squiggly line, which in this case is the Nanlite FS300, anytime that thing is going inside the circle, that is representing desaturation. And anytime the light is going outside of the circle, that is indicating oversaturation. And then the arrows are indicating which colors are blending into the others. So you'll notice here hue eight is kind of pushing over into hue nine. So right away we can notice that hue bins three all the way through eight are all desaturated, whereas hue bin 15 is really spiking out quite oversaturated. And this will all make much more sense when we look at the SSI. But now take note of on our graph where it says RG equals 101. RG is the gamut measurement, indicating the saturation of the light. But unlike RF, which has a scale of zero to 100, RG has a scale of 60 to 140. So with RG, anything over 100 indicates more saturation and anything under 100 indicates less saturation. And this can get a little tricky because if that RG was right at 100, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a perfectly saturated light because both the fidelity reading RF and the gamut RG are constantly influenced by one another. So it's pretty rare to have both your RF and RG right at 100. In other words, even if that were to happen, that wouldn't necessarily mean that it is a perfect light. What I'm trying to say is that TM30 is not all a numbers game in the same way that CRI is. In other words, when it comes to the TM30 calculation, high numbers doesn't mean excellence in the same way that your CRI calculation does. It's more about knowing how to read the color vector graph and understanding what the colors are actually doing. But just for quick reference, if your LED was giving you an RF of below 80, in the professional world, that would be considered a problematic fixture. And if your RG is giving you a rating below 80 or over 120, that would also be problematic. But again, the RG is just a reading of the saturation, so it can get a little tricky. But when we look at the white balance chart, we can quickly see the results of these fidelity readings a little more clearly, or at least I can. It's just something that me as a cinematographer, I'm more used to looking at a white balance chart versus a TM30 chart. It just helps put it into perspective for my specific brain. So what we notice right away is that the Nanlite FS300 is not exactly a neutral daylight source. So now let's jump to the spectral distribution. Now this is a waveform that shows us the relative values of the colors that are being produced by the FS300. So you'll notice right away this insane blue spike and we even have a little green spike here as well. Now this blue spike for pretty much all you know low budget daylight LED fixtures, that's pretty uh, normal in my experience. But this little green spike is something that we should be paying attention to. However, this is all way more revealing when our SSI results come in. So SSI stands for the Spectral Similarity Index. Now, unfortunately, the Sekonic 800 doesn't have a way to save the SSI comparison in JPEG or PDF form. So I just snapped a picture directly off of the Sekonic's display. So what's going on here is that SSI is used to compare two different light sources and shows how they are spectrally different. And the Sekonic 800 comes preloaded with standard industry fixtures, um, or you can just simply save your own. So the one that I'm comparing the FS300 to is a preloaded one that is already installed in the Sekonic 800. It is considered an industry standard light source that at 5,500 Kelvin does have excellent color fidelity. So what we're looking at here on the SSI comparison, this little outlined graph in the front of the waveform, that is the industry standard source with absolute excellent colors. And meanwhile, our waveform in the back, that may look familiar because that is the same uh, spectral distribution 
of the FS300. And with this comparison, I did get an overall SSI reading of only a 75. Now, if you're hoping for an excellent SSI reading, you would be looking for numbers between 90 and 100. And even 80 to 90 SSI rating is still very good. But anything from 70 to 80 is considered to be possibly problematic. And an SSI of anything less than 70 is pretty much no bueno. So now let's take a look at what is going on here. So as you'll notice, these colors over here don't even exist on our FS300. It just completely falls off into nothing. So that right there is an indicator of why we probably got that 75 rating right out the bat. But also this blue spike is something we don't see in an industry standard source, even in, when it is a natural 5,500 Kelvin, okay? But also here you'll notice that green spike that from the spectral uh, distribution of the FS300 is much higher than what the standard industry source has. Pretty much all of these colors are much higher uh, peaking than what a neutral 5500 Kelvin industry standard source would actually look like. So that right there is revealing to you why you get that low SSI reading of a 75. Now, a lot of guys would say, oh, 70 to 80 is still acceptable. True, it's acceptable, but you'll soon find out why 70 to 80 is actually considered problematic. Because when I get in here and we look at the data chart, we can see where the Sekonic is gonna show us how we could potentially fix the light. So right away we see here everything. It puts it all out there for us. It shows our UV delta curve of 0 0.0031. It shows the illuminance of 365 foot candles. Now that was taken from a three meter distance which is pretty dang decent, all things considered. Pay direct attention to this area right here. Here you'll notice it's showing us some options. CC lighting filter. It's suggesting we put a 1 8 minus green directly on the light. Because if we look here on the CC index, anytime the Sekonic is showing a CC index or a CC number of uh, magenta, that means it's suggesting you add magenta in your tint shift on your camera settings, okay? It's, it, the, the CC index is a suggestion of how to um, work with the light, okay? And also something else to consider would be a 1 8 CTB which is also interesting. So that right there is very revealing to me, much more, you know, once I see that, then it puts everything into perspective, that spectral distribution makes sense, that low SSI of 75 makes sense, uh, the color vector graph chart makes sense, you know, it's all that thing starts to make sense when I can see it in the data chart. So that's what I love about the Sekonic 800. It provides you with multiple different tests and readings uh, because all of our brains work a little differently. Me, when I I'm looking at these words and numbers, I, I, I identify a little bit more better with that. Whereas when I'm looking at something like the TM30 chart, until I really uh, broke it down and researched it and, and took a class or two and learned how to understand it, up to that point, I didn't exactly know what the hell I was looking at. So that's why I wanted to make this video to help some of you out. And down here, you will see the SSI of 75, the SSI D 75, okay? That is a pretty low rating, like I said before. Uh, still acceptable, but is problematic. But now if we come down here, I wanna point out, look at that TLCI rating of 99. Now, nobody goes off of TLCI anymore because it's based off of old broadcast cameras, which are pretty much irrelevant at this point, okay? And I say irrelevant because TLCI is calculating off of the Rec. 709 color space, which in our current day of 2022, you know, that's old news, okay? Because now we go off of DCI P3, which is the new standard for the film industry. So, you know, you're starting to see like, oh yeah, CRI and TLCI is cool, but it's not up to date with how we have evolved as a community of filmmakers in terms of our color space. Our Sekonic 800 tests reveal that the Nanlite FS300 is leaning on the green side and it's not technically a neutral source. So I am fully aware of how incredibly nerdy all of this is. However, these readings do indicate to us that the Nanlite FS300 does in fact have some slight color distortion. But the RG is very close to being 100 and the RF is still above 95. So purely from a technical standpoint, the FS300 is still a good fixture technically and it will render colors somewhat naturally.
However, you would definitely want to take care of that green shift if you plan on using this light directly on an actor's face. Whether it's by adjusting your tint in camera, which not all cameras have that option, which in that case, you would have to apply some gels directly to the light. In this case, a 1 8 minus green. So TM30 and SSI is something that we should all start paying attention to, even low budget indie filmmakers like you and I, because LEDs have pretty much become the new standard. Because here's the issue with this, on the surface, those TLCI and CRI ratings on the FS300 are really good. And those are the numbers that manufacturers are slapping all over their spec sheets. But as you saw, when we look closer and do some testing with the Sekonic 800, we really start seeing what these lights are putting out. So I hope you're all starting to understand why color accuracy is so important, because that green shift is something you would definitely notice in camera. And currently, even right now, of it being March 2022, TM30 and SSI is still relatively new in terms of what manufacturers are making available. You know, offhand, the only companies that I know of that reveal their color vector graph charts uh, would be someone like Quasar Science or Astera, Digital Sputnik, Cream Source. You know, offhand, those are the only companies that I can recall that are making the TM30 uh, charts more readily accessible uh, on their brochures and web websites, or at least, you know, easy to find. So this is a little tricky for all of my low budget indie filmmaker friends out there because a Sekonic 800 is gonna run you around $1,600 brand new. But then on top of that, you'd have to live in an area that has these industry lights on display so you can go and take some readings for yourself. So unless you're like in LA or New York, you're gonna be somewhat limited. But my hope is that the more people talk about this stuff and companies start to realize that the concern for modern color science is rising, I'm hoping they'll be more inclined to include the TM30 uh, vector graph charts and maybe even the SSI comparisons on their photometric section of their websites. You know, that would be something that I would like to see in the very near future. And if manufacturers are not making the color vector graph charts easily accessible, then perhaps that's a red flag. Obviously, it goes with everything else, you get what you pay for, especially when it comes to LED lights. But you would be surprised at how many companies are putting out some pretty exceptional results without that hefty Hollywood price tag. So I hope this was fairly easy to digest. I tried to make it as uh, simple as possible, but obviously if you have questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comments below. I wanna give a shout out to all of my Dog Times Patreon supporters. They know how much I love my Sekonic 800. I talk about it all the time over on the Patreon. I'm constantly showing how I use the Sekonic on set in both my gaffer and DP jobs, and it really makes it a breeze matching any sort of lights. Special thanks to the members of the producers tier, Mike Skinner and Fred Parr. And thanks to you for stopping by and watching the video in its entirety. Hey, maybe hit that share and like button, help a brother out. For now, that is a wrap. There's a plane coming. The plane, the plane. Why you, ah, oh, that grid already ripped open. That was just for funsies. I didn't have my wardrobe on. Where's my wardrobe designer? My wardrobe designer took the day off. What the heck? I gotta put my Optimal shirt on. Oh boy, now the dogs and planes start. Right here, the Nanlite FS300. This is our guinea pig for the day. Ah, look at this shitty light stand.